Hey everyone, Peachy Ty here again. We've got some more Modern Ace Basics for you today. We're going to be working on grip strength, uh, different ways that I have my guys work on grip strength and different tricks that I like to use. So, hope you enjoy. Next thing, of course, is, is this drill that probably everyone's done. You take the stick, you walk it up. Okay? That's great. You should do that. Um, that's only one direction, though. So what I usually do then is once I get to the bottom, I will lower my hand and work it back up the other way. So I get to the bottom, and I switch, and I do it back the other way. That way I'm going both directions on the finger strengthening and the comfort with the stick. So I'm going both directions, up here and down. I don't want to do down with gravity assist, and that's why what I do is I rotate, rotate, and I don't have gravity assist. One of the things I like to do on that is to make it more challenging because these sticks are not very heavy um, and they're short. So do the same thing with a staff. And you might have to hold the staff in the middle, but the deal is you walk a staff up all the way to the bottom. Okay? That'll take a while, but your fingers will feel it. If you're really ambitious, then what you do is you grab your Schedule 80 pipe. So that staff there that I just did, that's a that's a Chinese hardwood staff. That's about two pounds. The Schedule 80 pipe, conduit pipe, is about six pounds. So that's a whole lot harder. I don't know how many inches you want to do that on, but the Schedule 80 pipe is a lot of good fun for whether you're doing stick work, uh, staff work, uh, any of those things. And we'll talk about that later. So after we did the finger strengthening, um, there's a few other strengthening you can do. I usually like to do this after I'm totally warmed up because I don't want to stress the stress the tendons, but what I like to do is to do abanicos through the hip as hard as I can. I want to break things. Okay, and I'm pop, watch me drop my hip. I'm dropping my hip and bam, okay. Dropping that hip to do that abanico. And you can practice this against something to hit. I don't have something to hit here, but I want to hit really, really hard. But I'm going to go here and I go, bam, 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 bam. What is that? Okay, so you can practice that for strength, not just speed. All right, uh, last little bit of grip uh, work that I want to do with the uh, sticks is uh, basically a plank or kind of bottom of a push-up position. Uh, the easiest way to get to this is get a get a grip that you uh, stick that you can grip comfortably, and what you're going to do is grip it like so. Okay. Now you're going to get up in push-up position, get into push-up position, and put these underneath your armpits, and then push up, hold, and you're good. Okay. That's one way. The other way is you can do it this way more of a core exercise um, and hold. You can push up for, for some of those if you want. I recommend um, not. Don't push up the whole way um, because one, you're gonna get your wrist in a bad position. So just push up high enough that it gets comfortable. But you'll find out that uh, this is one of the ones that's very stressful on your triceps if you make it into push up totally fine but you want to be warm and you want to be prepared so start with the hold positions first and work up from there all right I just want to discuss uh, a couple things with uh, grip training that we were for staff use okay so let me start with one staff one staff is uh, you can see these hopefully you can see these they're uh, straight staffs Chinese hardwood all the way through um, what I like to do is to do a few things. So I want to show this particular one first. So I grab at the end, as close to the end as I can, uh, and I'm just going to raise and lower it, okay? just with my wrist. Raise and lower. Raise and lower. I don't raise past, I mean, I don't lower past the straight wrist because I don't want to put uh, bad pressure on the wrist. I'm just raising it and lowering it. Okay? Raising it, lowering it. If you have to choke up on the staff, that's fine at first, but do try to work your grip so that you can be at the end of the staff with no puño showing, no uh, no butt showing, and do this exercise. It should get you a fairly high number of reps. Okay? 
Okay, so that's the simplest one. Um, there's another couple, and that's going to be going to the side. So, just I like to do one side at a time, so I can concentrate on the feel of my wrist. But you see, I'm perpendicular to my body. I'm raising it, lowering it. So there's really a lot of pressure on this thumb to raise and lower that. Again, you can choke up on the stick, on the staff, if you have to. Okay, it gets drastically harder the closer to the end you get. All right, and then you can do the same thing on the other side. And now, now your strength training is on the small fingers of your hand. Okay? Like I said, I like to do one side at a time, right? Do the thumb at one time, get a lot of good reps on the thumb, and do a lot of good reps to get it on to the fingers. So that's basically, you know, something that's coming straight down. That's the first exercise. Up, up, okay. That's the first exercise. Next exercise is to the side. To the side. And then the other one is the other side. I'm trying to keep the forearm parallel to the ground the whole time. I'm not trying to keep the stick staff perpendicular to my body the whole time. Those are really, that's really the, the simplest things you can do. What I also like to do then is, um, let me, do, while I'm talking, let me uh, work the other hand because this hand now is tired because these exercises work. All right, do a few on this side. That's the forward one. Again, at the end of the staff, try not to use your arm to help. It's all in the wrist. Okay, same thing on this side. Wrist, so you can see me strain. Wrist, okay. and the other side. Just a few to get them equal, equal out. And give this guy a break. So another couple things I do is to look at trying to do a sinawali. Okay, for those of you who do Filipino martial arts, you know what a sinawali is. But really, what I'm going to be doing is treating these like small sticks and weave them together. So, the other staff here. And so I'll grab them both. Again, near the end, I'm gonna keep a little bit of punya. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and choke up because I think a good starting place is about eight inches from the end. And you just load up and you do Sinawali. One, two, three. One, two, three. So it's, I'm just doing the, the heaven stick. So I'm just going to start from here. I'm going to go temple, temple, temple. Or forehand, backhand, and backhand. Okay. Um, that gets really tiring. <laughs> so if I were fresh, I would joke up on those and show you that. Um, but now since I showed you so much on the other ones, actually, uh, that was a challenge for me. Anyway. Um, so it's, it's a lot of fun. You can do you can do a fair number of sinawalis. I mean, you could do um, heaven six around the head, right? If you wanted to, heaven six around the head, if you wanted to. You can come up with a lot of things. I generally find it's a lot easier to stay with the high targets. So I wouldn't probably do I wouldn't probably do double sinawali, right? So double sinawali is high, low, high. It just gets hard to separate what's high and low um, with the long staffs. And you don't have a lot of leeway, okay? Just making sure I don't hit anything. Uh, but try the Cinewales with at the end of a staff. Uh, like I said, you can could, you could go all the way to the end like I did in the exercises in the beginning um, to make it more challenging. All right, hope you enjoy that. Always come up with neat, good ideas. These are really variations of, of, of the club type things. It's just we're using not a lot of weight, we're using a giant lever arm to give us that stress. And it also changes the timing of things and also the feel. The other thing uh, that I did want to mention during this is that while you're wielding these for Sinawalis or any sort of striking drill you want to do to work your strength, you actually get to feel your stance. If you're off balance, you're going to feel it. Okay, You're going to feel it and you're going to go, oh, whoa, because of these lever arms are great magnifying glasses for uh, problems with your structure and your timing. Uh, that's one of the reasons we, in my kung fu we, what we end up doing is we teach staff as the first weapon uh, because it's a great way to show uh, connection with your body. It's a great way to show, put a magnifying glass 
on problems with uh, structure, timing, those kinds of things. All right, enjoy, keep practicing. Back to the staff grip exercises. There's well, one more thing I want to add to what I did uh, downstairs. So we did the, the ones downstairs to the front, right? To the side and to the front dropping, okay? What you can also do, so that gets this abanico motion for strength and this internal abanico motion for strength and then this for striking. The other half of the striking is not only the first part, but the end part. So what you can do is you can take the staff, grip it hard, right up by your shoulder, and then use your grip to raise it up. Okay, just your grip. So I'm not swinging my arm, my elbow's staying in place. I'm just using my grip to raise it. This is the way I like to do this. It puts a lot of good strength on the front part of my forearm there. And I'll show the other side. This is the way I like to do it. Look you're here and use your grip, raise up. This also makes it so that you don't over flex that wrist. I don't want to do that. Okay, so bam, 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 okay. All right, I like that one a lot. There's another way to do it, which is to the rear, but I find that it doesn't have enough range of motion. So if I just do off the ground and up as far as I can, I can also do that. And again, I'm gripping at the end of the staff for the most stress. And again, you want to do these, of course, once you're warmed up, once you've got the blood flowing, the tendons are warm, everything's happy, then you can start doing this, okay? Like I said, this is the same muscles in the wrist as the upwards one, right? So the upwards one I did this way. Upward ones again, we'll just one more time. I'm just gonna raise using the wrist. So this will strengthen your wrist a lot. I recommend doing this as kind of part of your warm up or part of your warm down. If it's part of your warm up, put it at the end, okay? Like I said, you want the tendons and blood flow to already be warm and uh, moving. Back to the schedule 80 pipe. You can do the same exercise with the pipe if you're really ambitious. So I can put it on my shoulder, do the same grip exercise, and there you go. Okay, I'm not going to do a whole lot of those because I haven't been doing them. But that's what you can do with a heavier pipe. Okay, And you can do the bottom one too. So same thing with this. It's going to be really hard. I'm going to choke up on this one. Okay? And I can barely get it off, right? Because that I haven't done this. The other thing you can do with the Schedule 80 pipe there is spinning. Um, I know we're in an Arnie's type focus right now. Again, what we're talking about control wrist attribute development, so it is sometimes ha handy to have a giant lever arm like we talked about with the Cinewallet. So for one set of spin that you can do where you have a lot of control is you're going to grip the stick like this and you're going to push it forward. Okay? You're going to push it forward until it dips. And as soon as it gets forward, then you're going to rotate around that thumb. That'll let you change grips. And you do the same thing on the other side. Push it forward, around the thumb, change grips. Push it forward, around the thumb, change grips. So now we're spinning. Uh, if you're going to use a Schedule 80 pipe that's six pounds, I would recommend not hitting your shins. That would be bad. Okay? So, you want to be comfortable with that. So. You can start with a normal staff. So we start with a normal staff. Same thing though. The spin goes like this. I've got an alternating grip. I'm going to push it forward. Okay. And I'm going to, once it gets past, I'm going to spin around the back of the thumb and change grips. It looks like the change grip is going to be pretty slow, but it's not. So once you get used to it, you just are comfortable. You notice that I'm not just using my arm, I'm using my body both to get out of the way but also to add power. Okay? And it's the same spin as the as the single hand version, but it's the two hand version. Something you can do. Lastly back to the Cinewallies. I don't think they you can see them very well down there, so I'm gonna try them up here again. So again we hold two stabs like they're gonna be sticks. And we just go, okay, great, I'm gonna do a Cinewallet. So you have to have a lot of room. One, two, three. One, two, 
three, and I got the fence here, so I'm only going high, high, high. You can do all of your Cinewellies. You can do X Cinewelli. You can do Paral Paral. You can do anything. You can do single Cinewelli, a little less interesting, but you can do that. You can do X Cinewelli, so I'm going to do all high. So X Cinewelli is like high forehand, high forehand, high backhand, high backhand. That's my X Cinewelli. So you can do all your Cinewellis with staves. Challenges your grip.